Hello, welcome to Glenn Scarnet Creative Images again. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about producing this image, this crested crane that I did uh, just recently. I, I, I did it initially because I wanted to try out some new textures I've created. Uh, this is one of them. I've just been um, producing them in Photoshop, just uh, creating some painterly type back, backgrounds and um, seeing what I could come up with. And this is just one of the few I... Um, I ended up with so I thought I'd try it on one of my uh, other images and this is um, a crane let's just take off all the um, the layers so you can see it this is an image of a crested crane that I took at the uh, bird gardener at Harewood House uh, just north of Leeds um, south of Harrogate and if you're out that way it's well worth a visit in the houses too um, but um, these guys roam around the garden so you can actually get quite good good pictures of them really uh, magnificent birds um, but anyway I'm just going to take you through the um, how I produce this it's just this image and a couple of textures using my my new texture that I've created and first off I didn't need to fill in this area at the top of the image here because obviously overlying a texture overlaying a texture um, I'm going to be uh, just pulling the bird through from the background so I didn't need to worry about not having uh, anything in there and using my usual 20 by 20 um, starting image um, and the first thing I've done with this is I created um, two copies of the background image and we'll just do that again so I can show you what I did with them what I, I like to use on um, by the way that's Control J just to create a copy um, I like to sort of soften the image and then sharpen it and it, it gives it a little bit of a painterly effect and the way I do this is by using the reduce noise filter now if we go in here uh, and go to reduce noise um, the filter will pop up and if we just come down here um, you can see there's the image as it stands at the moment and if we let the, the noise filter work it softens it a little bit um, and sometimes I may do that more than once on an image. I may do it do it a couple of times. I don't want it to preserve any detail. I've taken out any sharpening details and I've just whacked the strength up right up to 10. Uh, I'm going to click OK on that. Um, and then we'll, um, we, you won't see any discernible effect. But it quite, can be quite good in, in composite images if you're putting things like houses in and things like that. It can have quite a, a good effect on uh, on making them look a little bit more painterly. And if I just turn it off, you can just see very slightly how it's softened it. And I may sometimes do that again on the same image. Let's do it again and just so you can see what, what happens. It softens it. Let's do the reduce noise again. And it's softened it a little bit more. And then click OK. So we've done two softens on that. And then what we're going to do is on the next layer, which was remember that we copied two layers, we're now going to go and add a filter and we're going to use a high pass filter. And this has got the effect of, um, it's a bit like a sharpening filter, like an unsharp. If you used unsharp mask, similar to that, but we haven't got the options for changing the radius and, and things like that. So what we're going to do is it's found the edges and we're just going to adjust that again it's a judgment call is this but we just want to bring some detail back into this bird in certain parts so we're just going to click OK on that and it'll go off and do its thing and then we just want to set that to be a, a soft light blend overlay and it might look quite subtle but it's already had the effect of giving us a little bit more the painterly effect on the bird um, there you go so let's let's go back to where we are and it, it can look it, it depending on the image you're using it, it's it's more or less pronounced so you've just got to sort of trust me on that one as it were so let's go back to my originals get rid of these two that we've just created and that's my original the next layer is, is just a hue saturation layer. And the reason I've done this is I wanted to get rid of that green in the background. Now, I didn't want to cut the bird out because it's too complicated. We're going to use it by just, we're going to, we're going to pick it out just by using um, um, some brushes. 
But I wanted to get rid of some of the green in this background, mainly because I don't want it, the green to be showing through on here. I thought it would, based on the colour that the background is, um, uh, the texture, sorry, that's going over, I thought it would look better if we had more of a neutral colour in the background of here. It'd be a little bit easier. It'd blend in better. So I've, if we look at that texture layer, we'll see I've gone to the greens and I've adjusted the U on that. So I've no green in it there. And I've also brought the saturation down. So I'm, I'm and um, so I'm, I'm taking as much saturation out of it. And I've also pumped up the lightness there. So I don't want it to be too dark. I've pumped the lightness up there. So that that's why that that's there. And that again, it's another judgment call on the sort of image that you may be doing. Now, the next layer now is the um, the texture layer. And if we just switch off that layer mask, you'll see um, I just opened up the texture layer, dragged it into the um, the document and, and there we have it. So what we've now got to do is we've got to bring through that bird from the layers below here. And we can do that by adding a mask. Let's just um, duplicate this layer then you can see what, what you get. So let's switch my one off that I've already done. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete that mask and we're going to start again with it. So I can show you how I've done that. So let's go for down here, add a layer mask. And you'll see we've got the blank mask there. Now, what we have to do, if you remember on some of the other videos, is we've got to choose, um, make sure that the foreground and the background are set to black and white. And we can choose that by setting, if we click on that default background there, and we've got the arrow there that will switch us around black and white. And remember, if we choose a soft brush, we've got a soft brush already selected, I think, on here. If we have a look, we've got the soft round brush on here. Now, if we've got a white layer mask and we use a black brush, we'll start to delete the we'll start to delete the texture that we've got on here. Uh, and if we want to bring that texture back, we can just switch to the white layer mask, to the white brush, sorry. Um, so in this case, we're going to use the um, the black brush to, to rub off, if you like, the top layer. Now, I'm just going to set that to 100% so you can see what, what you get. So if I now start brushing on here, you can see that the, the layer's coming out from below um, of the bird. Now, we're just going to roughly brush away most of this. Don't worry if it's not, it's not going to be well defined at the moment. We're going to go back and do that. We just want to get most of this from the background so we can see what we're working with. So let's just get some of that off there. Um, we know what the hardest bit's going to be. It's going to be these feathers and the um, and this crown here. Now, the eye is very good at, at not seeing certain things. So we've got a few little tricks up our sleeves, sleeve here that we can use. Um, and it, it doesn't work probably on when you're cutting out hair on an individual because, you, you know, this is quite a pain to lay. Uh, image. Now we've cut around the outline, so we want to bring some of that back in there. So we're now going to shift back to the white brush, and if we go around, we can see it's bringing some of that back. And what we can do is, where we need to get that well defined, if we go into where they say the beak is round here, we can start to bring that back in around the edges here, and we can increase or decrease the brush, so it makes it easier. Uh, now, if you've got this is I'm doing this with a mouse, actually, but I have got um, a Wacom tablet. And if you haven't got a Wacom tablet, I will suggest you, you get one, because when you start doing fine cutouts and things like that, they're really the only way to do it. Um, it's quite hard doing certain things with a mouse. You can you can uh, you can wing it a little bit, but it does get quite difficult. So you can see what we're doing here. And don't worry about it being too accurate at the moment because we're going to soften it up a little bit. We're going to go back and we're going to bring the flow down. And we're going to start sort of just softening the edges just round here. And then bring it back again using a softer brush. So you see it just brings it back in a little bit. And, and what you do is you go round and you start sort of blending it so it looks a bit more natural but we're not bothered about being totally accurate because the eye will fill in and it's going to be a painterly look now we'll do the same with this um 
with these spines around here. We're going to go around, we'll adjust the brush up and down, and you'll see as we go around, we're bringing some of it back, but I'm not too worried that it isn't all coming back, you know, that we're going over bits and hiding bits. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to get the look and the feel. So, for instance, this bit here obviously needs to to come out, but you, you're just going to go, keep going round until you do that. And you may change over the brush to the other brush to, to delete some and things like that. So, you know, it's just a, a case of going round and seeing what works best, bringing it out a little bit and defining it. And you're going to have to do that all the way round until you get the right look. And like I say, the eye will fill in where where you've not got, I've not got the full black bits on the top, but you get the idea if we, if we go around. And so we'll do that all the way around here until we've got something that looks quite reasonable. Um, and you'll find that as you blend it in, it doesn't look, you don't want it to sit out and stand proud off the, the back there. You want it to actually look as if it's blending in a little bit. So you can soften it a little bit round the edges and that looks a little bit better than just going for a straight cutout. If we'd have gone for a cutout, it wouldn't have worked very well. This, this works quite well just using a, a soft brush. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn that one off and we're going to go back to my original and we'll delete that layer and you'll see my original there. That's what I ended up with. Now, at this stage, I'm happy with that. So what I wanted to do then is I wanted to adjust the colour balance a little bit. I wanted to get it a little bit, bit more redder and orange. So I've just added a, a, a colour balance adjustment layer there. And I've adjusted the mid-tones and the highlights a little bit. And again, these are, these are just you know things you can do and, and by eye and see how you want it to appear, which is best for you. Um, now, at this stage, once I've got the colour balance right, I uh, I just created a, 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 a copy of the layers below. And that's all this is here. So that's a control alt shift to create copies of the layer below. Now, on this layer, I've now applied another texture. I popped a texture over the top of this image. I think it's just a brown paper texture, um, like a, a, a beige type uh, paper, crinkly paper texture. Now, I've added another layer mask on here. And if we switch this layer mask off, um, the reason being I only wanted the texture to apply on this background. I didn't want it to apply to the bird. So what I've done is I've created a mask at the side of this um, uh, texture and I've painted off the texture off the bird. And that's what that is there. So if we go in, you'll see that the texture is not applied on. I switch that on again, disable. See the texture's over there. I don't want that to apply, so we've switched it off and we've just painted away to delete the texture off there. Now the next layers are going to be um, an oil paint layer, um, but I only want the oil paint to apply to the head of the bird and the neck here. I don't want it to apply to the rest of the bird. So what I've done here at this point is I've created another Let's just um, create the, the a copy of the layer from below. And then I'll, I'll do a control J to come to uh, do another copy of that layer. And the reason I'm doing this, that is because I want to create the oil paint layer here in this layer here. And then I want to overlay it and then create a mask to bring the oil paint through just from the, the, the bottom layer. So we'll, we'll go through that. It sounds complicated, but it's not as, it's not as complicated as it sounds. So we switch that layer off. So this is the layer we're going to apply the oil paint. And if we go on to the filter and go to stylize and oil paint, you'll see you get the oil paint filter. And you see what it does. It, it, it's, it, it's very obvious what it's doing to that image. And you can see what it's doing. If we scroll out, you can see what it's doing to the feathers. I don't want it to apply to the feathers here. I just want it to I'm going to have it apply to the bird, but I'm going to apply it to all of the image initially. And I've, I've whacked the stylization right up. These are things you're just going to have to play about with. Uh, you can adjust the angle of the lighting if you want um, to make it look a little bit different. You can adjust the brush, brush detail. The shine is almost like contrast, the amount of contrast that you might want in it. 
I've got the shine down at one. I don't want it to look too obvious. And we're going to click and you can see on the background here what it's doing to that layer on the background. So we're going to click OK, let it do its oil paint business, uh, which it has done. If we scroll in, you can see now that's applied the whole image. Now, I don't want it to be on the whole image. I just want it to be on this part of the bird. So we've got this layer copy here, which we already created. So we're going to switch that on. And it's obviously obliterated the uh, oil paint layer. So what we're going to do now is apply a mask. And we're going to do what we did earlier. We're going to take the brush and we're just going to paint off the areas of the bird that we don't that we want where we want the oil paint to come through. So if we screw, if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see here. If we now go, we make sure we're on the mask layer. If we now go on here, you can see I can now start to pull through um, the oil paint layer. Now these are always creative choices that you're making uh, when you do something like this so it's really up to you how you want to do it you may not even decide to have, add an oil paint there but I quite like that and we might go to the end of the beak with that and keep going but again it's up to you decide what you want to do but that's how we'll do that on the oil paint there and we'll if we switch that off you see it's gone back on again so we're going to switch off those two layers, which are the ones we've just created. And we go back and we'll get rid of that. And we'll see we've got, and that's my version there. Now the final layer is a copy of the, um, the texture layer. So I've created a copy and overlaid it again. And this time, um, if we, if we switch off that layer mask, what I've done here is because it's darkened the, the, the whole image, um, I want to bring some of the detail back in the bird down here. It's too dark. So what I've done is I've added another layer mask and I've just brought that back into the, if, if you like, just into the, the bits of the feathers. If we look on here, you can see I've just brought some lightness back into the feathers here and into the to the neck here. So it, it, it's giving you that depth and that contrast that you want. And then I think with this, I brought it into Lightroom. And I think I may have made a few global tonal adjustments to it. Um, and I think I also may have put um, um, a radial filter on and darkened the edges or something like that when I've, when I've had to finally actually finish it in, in Lightroom. Um, but that's that's more. Oh, just before I finish, that final layer was put on as a soft light layer. If you go to normal, you'll see what you can actually see the effects of the of the layer mask. So I've put normal. I've gone to soft light, so it's just got a nice added a nice softness, um, uh, but given me sort more depth with the um, um, with the extra layer on there. And that's it. That's the um, the crested crane. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye-bye.